Welcome to BRC TV for another week as we count down to Stradbroke season, now just two weeks away. Eagle Farm hosts two stakes races this weekend, one of which is the Daybreak Lover Plate, a race named in honour of the dual Stradbroke winner who had quite a story, which we will discuss with Bart in a short while. Today on the show, we catch up with two of Queensland's best horses of this century, Valvalon and Shoah Hart, at their home of Glen Logan Park. And we also speak with Valvalon's trainer, Danny de Gaulle, 20 years on from the Stallion's first Doom and 10,000 success. Run you through some Stradbroke season hospitality options and look ahead to this weekend's racing, including the chances of Queenslanders Isotope and Venna Girl on day two of the championships. But first, we head to Innes Plain and speak with Glen Logan Park's Steve Morley about two stallions who went toe to toe 19 years ago on the Dooman 10,000 and Stradbroke, sharing the spoils across two races. Two decades on, and the pair are still side by side. Steve, we're looking for a hit to Stradbroke season. Now, one of the great moments in Stradbroke season occurred two decades ago when, when these two horses behind us, Shoah Hart and Falvalon, went head to head, not only in the Stradbroke, but also prior to that, the Doombin 10,000. They reversed the results and had one, two in both races. And sure enough, they both end up here at, at Glen Logan Park. Just looking back to those two races, it must've been a great time for the farm knowing what was to come. Oh, it was huge at the time. and. Uh... You know, and, and that thrill has never ever really left us. You know, I've been very proud of them all the way through. But you're right. You know, the the Doom and Ten Thousand came out, and Shower Hard had a wide run in that, and and Falv had a nice suck run, but he really put him to the sword. And uh, he, he he ran first, and Shower Hart second, and then they come out in the Stradbroke, and uh, Shower Hart actually looked like he was in a power of pain. He was right back in the field, and he was on the fence, and I'd almost given up uh, because we'd had both stallions tied up at that stage, and so I've looked to Falvalon and and Shoah Hart came out and you wouldn't credit it, they've actually come together uh, almost for the length of the straight and they've, and they've whacked each other a few times along the way as well. King's Gate, look at Shoah Hart. Shoah Hart is coming from the tail with Felvalon. Shoah Hart and Felvalon. Shoah Hart, Felvalon, they hit the line. Shoah Hart. Shoah Hart beats Felvalon and nose in the Stradbroke. They end up here together. Is there any signs when they arrived here together that they might have remembered each other from their uh, racing days? Yeah, look, there certainly was. It was uh, we used to get a good chuckle out of it because for many years afterwards, you know, they've they've got a yard that's probably uh, 80 to 100 metres long. Their stallion yards, and it was it, they would it would like they would eye each other off. You know, they'd you know they'd say you ready, set, go, and then they would just tear down the. Uh, down the, the park and uh, down the yards together and then they'd come back and loop around and then go again and I've got no doubt that they remembered each other because they did it for many years and they didn't do it with the other stallions, it was just those two. Yeah, well they've probably slowed down a little bit over the years, now they can just look over the <laughs> fence at each other. A uh, show of heart went on to become one of Queensland's greatest stallions, didn't he? Yeah, look I think as it stands now, show of heart would be the the leading all-time sire for prize money to have ever stood in Queensland's history and he's making an impact with his daughters as well. And, um, and you know, and Falvalon's just been a, a wonderful winner getter and still, you know, out there doing the job uh, every week, you know, you see them run around in town. So, you know, they've, they've really done themselves proud and, and the farm's just thrilled. We're now joined by Falvalon's trainer, Danny Begora. And Danny, some of that footage must bring back some great memories for you. Oh, uh, yeah, fantastic memories, Nathan. Like win two um, 10,000s and go over to Hong Kong, win two sprints over there with a stallion who raced on for a long period of time. You know, it was you know, outstanding effort by everyone involved and that worked around that horse. And that, that winter of 2002 was, was a great one for the locals, wasn't it? it was sort of you winning the 10,000 over Show of Heart and then the Stradbroke return clash, that was a, a great race. Yeah, it was a fantastic race. Um, my old mate Barry Miller got over the top of me there that day, but that was good, I was happy for him. Like, you know, we'd had a few decent tussles along the way and um, he got one over us that day, but you know, it was a fantastic race. Two stands going head to head up the straight here at Eagle Farm. It's probably one of my fondest memories. Yeah. Chloe, we're just around the corner from Stradbroke season. What can visitors to Doombin and Eagle Farm expect? They can expect an iconic Brisbane racing day um, out on the lawn in one of our hospitality suites. They can definitely enjoy a day uh, on, on course. And there's a range of packages to suit everyone. Absolutely. So we've got our uh, lawn packages for groups as well as our grandstand packages, moving right up to our big packages in our bird cage and our premium dining. Welcome Bart Sinclair now, and Bart, it is on a sad note that I welcome you to today. Yeah, sad news overnight, the passing of Lex Heinemann uh, suddenly, 
Uh, Lex was on the committee here at the uh, Queensland Turf Club for over 20 years. He's a charleville boy and uh, very successful in uh, rural real estate. So he had connections all over Queensland. He uh, handled some of the uh, transactions for big properties uh, in Queensland, right throughout Queensland. So sad because he's a passionate racing man too. And larger than life too. <laughs> larger than life. About the Daybreak Lover Plates, a Jules Stradbroke winner, but one with a difference. Yeah, he won the uh, Stradbroke, went to stud the next year, but didn't go according to plan and he came back into work. And to come back and race at that level, Group 1 level on a Stradbroke handicap was a fantastic effort. And then he then went back to uh, to stud and had quite a good career. Yeah, certainly a fascinating story. A few, few horses need to make a comeback in that Daybreak Lover played on Saturday off pretty ordinary runs last time. But another runner is one that you feel is the most interesting runner at Eagle Farm on, on Saturday. The Vega one running in a thousand metre race first up, well, you'd say too short, particularly if you had a trial on Tuesday. Tuesday and, and went well, might have taken the edge off him, but I still have memories of him running at the Sunshine Coast first up last campaign and he ran very well, 1,000 metres, but I thought he was the unlucky runner in the Stradbroke and uh, that's obviously the, the target for him this winter. He had a setback out of the Stradbroke, he had a little a bit of a fetlock joint problem, he's had time to, uh, I think, mature a little bit and, uh, by the look of him on Tuesday, he's, he's going really well. Yeah. Certainly look forward to seeing him back on Saturday as he heads to the Stradbroke but you're going interstate for your bet this week. Yeah look I think Isotope uh, Vega won stable mate, she'll win the Arrowfield. The uh, September run, I know a spring form was good down the straight at mm. Flemington. I don't know that she's quite as good on the circle. Yeah. Isotope very good last time and I think she's drawn to get a gun run just off the speed. And the Queen Elizabeth, uh, I find the addition of blinkers to a, a day What was, <laughs> what would kangaroo court here, what would you say the pronunciation is? A day. A day, all right. I've heard about seven different varieties. <laughs> uh, look, uh, Blinkers On fascinates me with that horse and um, he, he, he did it last year, three week break. I know the English style is a bigger gap between runs, but uh, I just think the Blinkers just might pick up a little bit of a zip into him. Well, I'll give him some strength. It'll be a great race, that's for sure. Here in Brisbane, I thought Euro Bell could race well at odds in race six. Welcome to Stradbroke Season, presented by TAB. Witness history trackside as the biggest names in Australian racing compete over six massive days at Doombin and Eagle Farm. Seven Group 1 races, more than $15 million in prize money, May 1 to June 12. Be part of Stradbroke Season, presented by TAB. The best time to be in Brisbane. Tickets on sale now. brc.com.au Don't chase your losses. Walk away. Gamble responsibly. Tony, this is Isotope's sort of grand final for what you mapped out for her through the Sydney Autumn on, on Saturday. Tell us how she's done since we saw her on, at Golden's. She's Clifford. done really well, Nathan. We follow the exact same procedure we do here in Brisbane. She went out to a venue at Hawkesbury four or five days on the you know, grass paddock most of the time, treadmill, just give her a good time to get over, give her plenty of time to get over that run at Rose Hill. Um, for me, just watching a race at Rose Hill underneath horses, she was a little bit unsure of herself. Rowan had to just ask her for an effort a few times to pick up. Once she got outside them and got room, she was really good. I think the confidence of racing inside horses again after the fall will bring her on no end. Her work has improved. Um, we're very happy with everything we're seeing with her, and I suggest we're going to see a better filly around with what we saw at Rose Hill. Form stacked up in the PJ Bell on Saturday of those behind her, but it's another level again on Saturday, is September runs and, and whatnot. So this is a really good place for you to find out where she sits in the pecking order, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. Look, um, we've got a little bit of a walk line through her with Wild really here in the winter as a two-year-old. It's just both horses are probably better as three-year-olds. Yeah. September run, I can't really gauge a line through her. All her best racing's in Melbourne. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting race, which form line you like best, but all I can do is control my filly, and I'm particularly happy with the way that she's done. I, I love the 21 days off that first run. I thought, if anything, she could have been a touch vulnerable. She was a little while off her jump out. She was quite a quite amount of weeks between runs from Magic Means Day to, to Rose Hill and I think she's made up pretty good leeway and I think she's pretty spot on and the low draw on the weekend is important to us and she looks as though she's going to get a beautiful run. Toby Edmonds, another Group 1 chance for Benna Girl on Saturday. We saw her win first up here in Brisbane. How's she done since? She's done great, Nath, you know. Um, she's a uh, gross doing filly, you know, so you know, if she doesn't do well, there's something wrong. So she's quite easy to train in that regard. Um, you know, second up into this Group 1, I think... You know, she gets quite dour after a run, so we've tried to keep her as, uh, as fresh, as fresh, as fresh a legs as we can. And um, you know, I think we've got, got it pretty right. You know, it's drawn beautifully, so she's going to get a lovely run in the race. So you know, it'll be up to her now. That's BRC TV for another week. We look forward to seeing you at Eagle Farm on Saturday, and hope you find a few winners.